Hi everybody, my name is Spike Brave and in this video I'd like to talk a little bit about the player skill rating or PSR. Uh, if you've been playing Mech Ryan Lion, you notice you have a little player skill rating and that goes up as you perform better. Uh, a lot of posts in the forums right now about players feeling like if they don't win they can't get their PSR to increase and if you're only playing pug matches you lose all the time which I don't believe to be true but a lot of people feel like they lose more than they win and that their PSR will never go up. Well, I only play solo matches, and I can tell you that your PSR can go up if you're only playing in solo matches. It will go up faster if you're on a team because your success will be better because you're working on a team, but you can increase your PSR only playing in the solo matches or pug groups. Uh, a lot of people are saying that you have to win. That's not true. You can increase your PSR on a loss. Winning makes it easier to increase your PSR. It does factor in. It is a huge chunk of your PSR rewards after a match. But it's not the only thing that affects it. So if you do really, really well on a loss, your PSR can go up. And that's what I want to show you. I have a match here, and uh, I will show you that here in just a moment, in which my team doesn't win, but my PSR does go up. A lot of people are saying on the forums when they hear another player tell them, yes, your PSR can go up in a lot loss that they want pictures or it didn't happen so somebody will post a screenshot and then get accused of photoshopping the screenshot and so on and so forth so i thought i'd show a video everything that i do and then uh we'll show you that my psr did increase on a loss you just have to do really really well i had an excellent match in this particular mech so we will uh show you that match here and uh because a lot of people will probably be interested i will talk a little bit about the mech that i used i will do a technical readout for the orion 2c later but Let's just take a really quick look at my build. So here's my Ryan 2C that I used. You can see I've got three LRM10s, and then I've got three medium pulse lasers in the arms. Uh, some people uh, may not like the LRM systems, and I get that. Uh, for me, the Orion, because it's so chunky, I can't brawl with him because he's easy to hit. Uh, a lot of his guns sit here on the uh, left side. So I decided to go with uh, LRM so I could fire behind cover, and then we'll go out to the mech lab and we'll look at him. So you can see that I have two medium pulse lasers in the right arm, one in the left. I have LRM 10s, and then in the side, left side torso, and then we have an LRM 10 in the uh, left arm. So I am a missile boat. That's what I do. You can see I've got a the max engine and a lot of double heat sinks to make sure I don't overheat. And then we'll go over to the modules real quick. You'll see that I do have target info gathering to make my missiles more effective. LRM cooldown and LRM range so I can shoot further and then advance target decays so that once I get a target he doesn't go away as quick and then of course the UAV and an artillery strike just in case I need them. So let's spend a look at the build. Let's go ahead and watch the match and you'll see that my PSR does go up after a loss. So for all those people that need picks or it didn't happen, here's a pick. Okay, you can see we have a match. It is an assault match on... The Canyon Network map. This was before the change to uh, shooting your opponent to get the stop the cap occurred. So we can't don't have that option here. But uh, as you can see, we are just moving into position. What I want to do is get into the center area where the Theta capture point is. I have those LRMs and I want to be able to uh, reach out to all corners of the map if I need to. So I start moving to that area. Uh, as I said, uh, I find this mech a little hard to uh, brawl with. His weapons and his arms are kind of low slung. You'll see me have some trouble shooting targets, and we'll point that out because of that. And, uh, of course, I think it's real chunky and easy to blow the sides off it, and I'll show you uh, places where it feels like that's occurring to me. So I come up over here. I want to get in the center area, and I see mechs, so I engage them with my LRMs. You can see that guy hit me, and you can see that that left torso lit up almost right away. It's so easy to hit. That's why I uh, go LRMs on this particular model, because uh, it's just tough to brawl when uh, everything seems to hit the same spot because it's so large. So at this point, I want to stay in the center here and engage targets where we can. Now, the enemy team is doing a great job of being really aggressive, and they're pushing towards our base. They're playing for the objective. That's a great idea. So I'm just trying to c suppress the targets I can see and get locks on. Target acquired. So what I do right here is I get to the, the rise here, and I just barely look over the edge so I can maintain a missile lock and uh, not take a lot of return fire. New target acquired. Got a Jenner down here in the uh, gully. I'd stay out of this area when playing this map. You'll see what happens to this Jenner. 
loses his leg right there to my LRMs, and then we uh, finish him off there. So once you get in that hole right there, uh, it's okay. easy for LRMs to pull you apart. So keep that in mind. Try to stay out of uh, really on any map, any type of uh, depression like that, because you'll uh, make yourself easy for LRMs. There's a spider jumping over my LRMs. I thought that was rather interesting. Acquired. You see, I'm just trying to keep uh, the enemy suppressed. Somebody just yelled for a UAV, and I'm looking for it. Mm -hmm. I did not realize okay. you can see it over there way off in the distance, kind of over uh, the corner where the other capture point is there. And uh, when we're playing a, a conquest match, but over there in the corner in front of me to my right. Base is being captured. New target acquired. So I'm just trying to use this area for cover and uh, put out my LRMs as much as I can for support. You can see I'm doing a great job of uh, keeping people suppressed and uh, making them stay in cover. Uh, got some uh, pretty uh, significant issues on our team with uh, staying together and focusing fire. You can see we're kind of scattered. That makes it tough to win a match. But that does happen sometimes. And I think what the deal is we got a lot of fast movers and they're just trying to get in a into position which can kind of lead to a, uh, a team that's kind of scattered and uh, really there's a lot of yelling and screaming you may see in the chat going on about how uh, we're not grouped up and we're doing poorly because of that if you actually uh, watch the match until the end of the match we're actually uh, staying up and uh, keeping it a close game until the very end we also have a disconnect and that does affect things there's that spider we'll take some shots at him as he runs I'm not really concerned with him. He's only got the single large laser uh, that does sting, but uh, I'd rather uh, focus on mechs with bigger guns. So I do let him go. I do take a shot at that Raven who's sniping, get him to move. I do move up with the team here. Uh, standing in the corner and just shooting LRMs all over doesn't necessarily help. I do want to provide support and perhaps provide a target. So that they're not just shooting at my team and able to focus mechs really well got this banshee kind of stuck you can see i'm i'm hitting the ground a lot on that banshee because of those low slung arms and uh it makes it tough again another reason i don't like to brawl on this mech trying to get a lock on that raven if uh enemy mech does have ecm you can get a lock on him still so see there i was able to get a lock on that raven See, again, there we go with the low-slung lasers. I was shooting the side of the hill instead of hitting my target. target acquired. Using this uh, pillar here for cover, but staying engaged. Don't want to give up any more space because we're kind of low. Now, as you can see here, the match is even, 7-7. Seven, seven. So uh, it wasn't necessarily a horrible match. It just, uh, at the end here, it gets kind of ugly. Um, we do have a disconnect, so we're technically down 2. Still staying engaged on this... Uh, Ferret, he's the one that scares me the most right now because uh, he's fast. I don't want him getting up behind me because I am a missile New boat. That's not going to be great for me if he does. There we go. And right here we finish New off that ferret. It got him legged, and then we uh, give him some LRMs. And then here is where the match goes pretty south pretty quick. Got a good lock on that uh, spider. New target acquired. ends up here that the uh, light that's assisting me goes down here shortly and then I have to face three mechs in a missile boat. Uh, I do well for being in a missile boat, but it's a missile boat versus uh, three mechs, so. I do manage to strip this enforcer's large guns off, so, but I still have three enemies. Uh, I figure they're gonna charge me now, so I drop an artillery strike on the side of the hill here. New target acquired. And you'll see me switching targets a lot. Now I come out here, and I'm hoping that artillery strike takes out that spider. But uh, he jumps out of the artillery strike. But I do manage to take his leg. I'm trying to keep an eye out for those other two. There's a lot of damaged legs. I'm trying to go for him, but all three of my opponents can jump, so it makes it really tough to keep a uh, target on them. I'm trying to uh, get some space here blow off legs. I'm getting hot so what I do here is I come around the corner and try to use uh, this for, so, for some protection and uh, some time to cool off. You see by running around here I'm not taking a lot of fire and I do get to cool off quite a bit. And there's that spider again so take a shot at him. I'm not really worried about him. That large laser is painful but 
Unfortunately, that crab gets behind me here, and I just can't get to him in time. And I go down. So you can see this match is going to end up as a loss. What we'll see here is that uh, the remaining mech, they don't, they don't know that he's DC'd, and there's no pilot playing it, so they go cap. That's a great idea because they're all tore up. They don't want to have to face another mech, especially because this looks like he, he is in a boat in quite a bit of SRMs. I wouldn't want to tangle with him if he was awake, so... They go cap out the match, so it'll be just a second here, but I do want to talk about, you saw my score, I was close to 800 points of damage, I had two kills, six assists, that's a really good match, regardless of whether we win or lose, so my PSR will go up on this match, so I just wanted to show uh, players out there that uh, don't lose hope, just because you're not winning doesn't mean that your PSR won't go up. Now, if you're worried about other stats, like your win-loss ratio, that can be frustrating, and I can't really offer you a lot of... Uh, advice on how to make sure that you win unless you join a team that's probably your surefire way to win is to uh, get on a team that's uh successful but uh in your solo match your psr can go up so uh we'll let this uh finish out on the cap here and you can uh take a look at my score at the end oh it looks like we still got a little bit of time so i'll continue to talk so you're not just sitting here in silence as uh things get capped out but as i said uh guaranteeing a win Really tough in a solo match. Guaranteeing that your PSR will go up, do the best that you can. Make good decisions. Uh, don't uh, go out there and get yourself killed early in the match. Because if you do a lot of damage, get some kills, get some assists, you can get that PSR to go up. So I just wanted to uh, provide this video for the members of the community who feel like that if they don't win a match, their PSR won't go up and they'll be stuck at the bottom forever. That's not true. If you do well, your PSR will go up whether you win or lose. So, uh, as I said, uh, we'll let the uh, cap finish out, and you can take a look at my score. As I said, it's close to 800 points of damage. We got uh, two kills, six assists, and uh, that was enough to get my PSR to go up. And I do want to mention that, uh, let's say I had, like, no kills and maybe two assists and 500 points of damage, I almost guarantee you my PSR would stay the same. So you may not lose PSR every match. So keep that in mind, too. As always, thanks for watching, and have great luck on the battlefield.